this, uh, this is a demonstration of the confocality of the Explora instrument. You see down here at our instrument control panel, you see the word Explora. This is right above the laser control, which at this time the laser is blocked. Uh, we're using 785 nanometer excitation, full power. We have our confocal hole set to 100, which is the smallest of the hole sizes that are available to us. A modest slit size, well the largest slit size of 200 uh, micrometers because we don't really need the spatial resolution the, or, or sorry the spectral resolution as, as you'll see in just a moment. I have the grading set to 1500 reciprocal centimeters and by that I mean to say that the uh, the very center of the detector, the CCD, uh, that pixel will correspond to this uh, this Raman shift in reciprocal centimeters, 1499.80. We have the 600 groove grating that we've selected and a 100x short working distance, uh, an Olympus objective. Our real-time acquisition is one second and when we do acquire a spectrum it'll be a three second integration time for a total of uh, for three accumulations which is to say a total integration time of nine seconds I've set the coordinates all to zero for our current position and this is what we see in reflected light from our current position and uh, what you see here is the surface of a piece of polystyrene pipe. It's uh, uh, just a piece of uh, plumbing purchased from a hardware store but as you'll see in a moment it has some very interesting uh, characteristics and, uh, and I think will very helpfully uh, demonstrate to you the confocality of the instrument. Alright, let's take a look at a real-time display with the beam currently focused on the surface. Now notice I had been in the video mode but I had stopped that and now I go to real-time display and I don't get a signal. Well that's because I don't have the laser on. As you see now if I click on the laser okay there's our spectrum. This is a, a common mistake that people will make. Many of us still do. But always check to see that the laser is illuminating the surface. So now, as you see, we get a very nice real-time spectrum of polystyrene. And let's, while we're at it now, let's uh, click this button up here, the piggy bank. And now let's acquire a spectrum with the beam focused uh, on the surface of this, of this polystyrene. And I'm just going to move the the crosshair over. All right, our, there's our spectrum. There's our uh, spectrum that we've acquired. Now let's go back to real-time display and what I'd like you to do is note the Z position. I'm going to be moving the stage up. Actually what I want to do too is I want to change this color. Uh, wait a minute, I'll do it right here. I want to change the color of the spectrum to something a little easier, a little better contrast for all of us to see. I'll change it to red. All right. Now let's go back to real-time display. And now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to move the stage up. And as I move the stage up I want you to notice the change in the spectrum that's going to appear right in this region. Okay. In the lower region below about 600 reciprocal centimeters or so. So now I'm moving the stage up. We're at about 2.3 micrometers or so. And I'm continuing to move the stage up and notice you see look at these two very strong bands up here and another one over here. And I'm going to keep moving the stage up until it reaches sort of a maximum. But what a difference. I just moved the stage up and you see now the appearance of these bands in here. Now I can tell you from experience and because I've worked with this material 
These are basically Raman bands of rutile titanium dioxide. So let's get a spectrum of that. Uh, and this is, uh, as we see here, it is 10, 10 micrometers below the surface, which we've collected this spectrum. All right. And as I said before, I don't really much care for this color. The contrast isn't isn't so great. It'd be easier for you to see if we make this red. The first one is blue. You'll see in a moment why I want to do that. Now let's go back to our video and we click the video and uh, the instructions tell us to move the turret to position 2, which I do. Click OK. And lo and behold, what do you see is below the surface are these white particles. Well, these are basically little clumps of titanium dioxide that have aggregated. I presume they would have been put in to disperse uniformly through the polystyrene, but there are areas in which they have aggregated. And uh, so if we, what we see is that if we get below the surface, then we can find this confocal uh, we can confocally find these areas of different composition. And why don't I just, for, to illustrate this point a little further, why don't I just move off of, this is where the laser beam would be, right where this green spot is. Okay, I'm going to move off of that spot, stop the video camera, go back to position one, click OK, and now let's go back to real-time display and our laser is on and lo and behold there's no titanium dioxide and that's because we've moved off so we are able to through the confocality of the Explorer instrument we're able to uh, resolve, spatially resolve uh, a chemically heterogeneous component within this polystyrene film. Now I'm going to move the stage forward a little bit. We'll see if we can recover this. There. You see? I moved the stage back here. Why? 3.8. I moved the stage and now let's see what this looks like in the video. And we should be on a titanium dioxide particle and lo and behold we are. So we can either find these particles either by the optical microscopy or by the confocal micro Raman spectroscopy which you see so clearly here. And now we're in the video mode and I'm going to bring this back to the surface. Alright, so now we're, po now we're focused right back on the surface of this polystyrene and I'm going to stop the video. We'll set the turret back to position one for collecting the Raman spectra. Go back to real time display. And sure enough, there's our polystyrene without really, there's just a hint of the, uh, of the titanium dioxide underneath there. Well, I hope this has been a helpful demonstration to you about the capabilities of the confocality of our Explora Micro Raman instrument. Uh, all of our other Micro Raman instruments, the Aramis and the Labram HR, they too have, uh, have this ability for confocality, uh, even I would say a little finer than in the Explorer, but even in the Explorer you can see how effectively uh, confocal micro-Raman spectroscopy does indeed work. Thank you very much for your time.